going to uh, other sources and putting a couple of keywords, this is a literature search. You're searching for a literature. That is not a research. It's a component of the overall research to remind you the whole process of research was defined at the beginning. This is where you go through the process of identifying what is already known, on basing your proposed idea on that, actually proposing a methodology, collecting data, analyze data, making conclusions, and publishing your conclusions. Throughout the whole process is called research. Okay? What you do at the beginning is literature search. Okay? By the way, your, all your dissertations in our school are being published at the end. So when you see these, these bind and blue books, these are the publications of the research. This is the end, the culmination of the whole process of the research that we're talking about. So just to come back to the process, is the idea is to go through a input, processing, and output. And let me break it down quickly in a moment um, as we go through the process. I'll start by the input process. And most of you know about the Geigo philosophy, right? The garbage in, garbage out. And the philosophy is very simple. If you don't choose the right ingredients to begin with, at the end, you're going to get garbage. That's the way it is. It's very simple. So if you don't choose the good quality literature, if you don't develop a good foundation to your research, if you're not choosing the right sources to base your work on, you're going to have later on problems. And what does that mean when I say problems? I'll just give you very simple examples. If you're going and you're developing a, a study and you're proposing a study on the let's say uh, computer self-efficacy. I'm just throwing it as an example, as an information systems example. And you're going to look at uh, using that as a measure. And you found a paper in this very remote regional conference proceedings. And there is very little literature review there. And there is a measure of computer self-efficacy. And you decided to adopt that measure. And you have done all the process. Hopefully, your chair will pick it up and will uh, flag it. But let, let's say this is not a dissertation. It's a research study. And you did it on your own. And at the end, you measure computer self-efficacy. And you come in, and your measure is not measuring what you were supposed to measure. Not only that, the reliability, the validity of your measure is totally incorrect. That is why. You, you need to make sure that you're choosing the right sources. If you're not choosing a high quality source to begin with, you might have problems with your measures. You might have problems with the theory. You might have issues with the whole uh, study. So you need to understand the, the centrality and the, how important that um, selecting the right quality. And yesterday, someone mentioned about the, the quality of input and where do you find it. I'll tell you in a moment where do you find it, OK? These. But you've got to understand, and we mentioned this yesterday, not all published material is in equal quality. I will add to it, not all published material in the same journal are at the same quality, OK? So you've got to be very smart when you go through the process and you're reading an article. And you say, here is a, a research study that was conducted. And they, used, uh, they did a, a cultural comparison uh, between three companies. One was in the US, and two were in Canada. Okay. Now, how major of a difference in, in culture do we have between the US and Canada? Right? You need to question beyond what you read, even if it's in a marginally OK journal. You need, to, you need to have your own judgment as you go through. And this is a learned skill. This is not something you're born with that I'm aware of. But essentially, you gain it through the process. As you read more literature, 
as you read more sources about quality of research, you understand even within a single journal that there are major variations. Of course, the issue of academic peer review process and you, at this point, you should be aware of the peer review process, the double blind peer review process that we're talking about and the, the pros and cons of that process and no one is saying that it's a perfect process. But for now, this is the best process we're aware of to advance research. Um, and so where do you look for the quality, the top quality or the quality information systems literature? Well, you go to a couple of sources. First of all, we have highly ranked information systems journals. There is actually a, a, a website that we cite that I think is no longer available. It's actually moved to another place, but I think there is a link from my website uh, to that source. Um, and essentially what they did is they took seven different research studies that were conducted on the strength of the impact of journals or journal articles on other research, the advancement of other research. And uh, what they did is they developed a mechanism. Each and every one of them de developed a different mechanism, but the key centrality was how many other research studies were done based on each paper published in a, a certain journal. If a journal has a lot of volume of papers that as a result there were a lot of research done over the years, then the value of the, or the ranking went up and up. And that's essentially what it is. And so in the paper that we shared with you, uh, there is a list of the top 50 and they took seven different research studies and they did an averaging of that seven. And what I showed in the paper is actually the top 50 of the IS journals. And of course, there is, th these are arguably, I mean, uh, you can argue that maybe number one should be number three and number three should be number one or whatever. But by and large, these are the top, okay, considered around the world. And if you look at, this is just a capture of the first 18, but essentially this is the table that you have there. And uh, what uh, Dr. Alice and I did is also indicated with the check in this table is where you can find the papers, either the full text or the abstract. Uh, some journals have embargoes on limit, limitations on the uh, years that they allow due to copyright. I'm not going to go into it, but by and large, you will see that majority of the top information systems articles you'll be able to find in about four or five of these databases. Okay, and these databases are available through our libraries, excellent in that regard, so you can go. And I'll mention one caveat to it is that the ABI inform is available under business, not under the computer and information sciences. Okay, the first one that you see on the list is available under business because in most universities, information systems or MIS, management information systems, is a discipline within the business school. And uh, some other schools, it's not. For us, it's still in the library. It fits in, in there. So just so you're aware. And of course, uh, there are the issues of reputable IS uh, conferences. We have the ISIS, the, information, uh, the International Conference of Information Systems. We have uh, AIMSYS, the American uh, Conference of Information Systems. We have HICS, the Hawaiian Conference of uh, information systems. These are highly reputable um, IS conferences that you can tap on and, and grab uh, some of the conference proceedings from there. And we do have some faculty members who publish in those uh, conferences, some of them regularly. I think uh, Dr. Ellis published uh, many times in Hicks. Uh, so, uh, so how do we find that literature, right? And do we, do we really need a GPS to get there, right? Well, how do we find the highest literature? Quality. Now, when I say quality, it doesn't mean the top quality, the top 50 that I mentioned before. 
That is the top 50, but there are other quality IS journals that are available. If you go to these databases that I mentioned, these are peer-reviewed databases, and you check the journal articles peer-reviewed, which I'm going to show in a moment, you will be able to capture those who are peer-reviewed quality IS journals. Okay? And sometimes not specifically IS. It depends on the fringes of information systems. It depends on what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with issues of culture, if you're dealing with organizational behavior, if you're dealing with uh, medical information systems, if you're dealing with uh, security areas, the fringes will be with other disciplines as well, computer science, uh, psychology, management, uh, whatever area. If it's e-commerce, you're going to be linking with um, marketing or, or other areas. If it's uh, uh, collaboration, uh, you're going to deal with some communication uh, the uh, areas. It depends. So this is where you're, uh, you need to make the right judgment. So where do you start? Well, most of you are already doing this for a while, especially after the use of Google is so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, prevalent in for, for almost everything we're looking for. You just go to that box and you type a keyword and you hit search. That's what we're used to, right? Well, the source of it is obviously these literature and um, you start with a keyword. What is that keyword? Usually the keyword has to do with your topic or the area that you're looking for. And you're looking for it in the title of the article. You're looking for it in the abstract of the article. And you, this is another limitation that most students do is that they do not do search for a targeted area with the paper. They just do a generic search, okay? All good databases will allow you either through the advanced search or through the, um, the regular interface to search specifically for words, keywords, in a certain place. So you can search for a certain word in the title. You can search only in the title. You can search for phrases by using quotations or brackets. You can look at the database, depends on the database, right? You can look for the keyword in the abstract or in the full text. And one common error, which I'm going to show later on, is the lack of doing search on keywords in the references. You can do searches on references. So you pick up papers that, in their reference, have certain uh, keywords. We'll talk about it in a minute. So what is the problem with? Uh, keywords. Well, the problem is the changes in buzzwords in our field, and especially in our field, but in, in a lot of research areas. And if you think about it, one very simple example is the, the, the use of the word phishing, right, over the internet. We're talking about those emails that you get and saying uh, that you're uh, the Database administrator is uh, trying to update their system. Please provide me your username, password, and your mother's maiden name, and your shoe size, and you name it. You just give everything, right? And so that area of phishing is something, if you go backwards in literature, how back in literature will that term was used? Probably, what, 10 years, maybe more, 15 years? Right? So the idea of, of the whole process might be unique because of that buzzword. But the philosophy, the theory behind it, the deception, the issue of fraud is nothing new. In the 50s, people used to get in the mailbox this uh, envelope saying, you just won $2 million. Just send us your name, your social security number, your date of birth, you name it. It's the same thing. It was just done over regular mail or on the phone. Hi, we're calling you from this company. We would like to uh, conduct the research. Please give us your name, social security, date of birth, you name it, right? Or I'm calling you from this uh, doctor's office, right? Similarities exist. So where do you find the underlining theories that might back up what you're doing so you can build up on it? 
Well, you got to stay away from these buzzwords because if you only use the buzzwords, if you go to the databases and you search for phishing, right, and you find a pH, 